It's hard to believe that this November 22nd will mark the 50th anniversary of President Kennedy's assassination. Governors, we've all been asked the question and we've asked others the question, where were you when you heard the news? Governor Byrne, let me ask you. I was in Atlantic City at a Bar Association convention and I was actually on the way from the hotel to the convention hall or whatever it was and uh, somebody said Kennedy's been shot. But then on the way back, I remember a black man with tears in his eyes saying, he's dead. I still cry. It's very emotional for us to think about that sad day for America. Governor Kane, what were your remembrances? Well, I was in Columbia Graduate School writing a paper in the library. And I heard a lot of noise. You don't usually hear noise in the library. Heard a lot of noise, a lot of people talking. And went down to see what it was about and heard the president had been shot. Again, no knowledge of what the result was, but that he'd been shot. So I started to walk back. Uh, and, and I was in the middle of Central Park walking across when I, people started talking. And I understand that he was dead. And the shock was, I mean, I'd voted for Kennedy. He was the one who told my generation that public service was the best thing you could do with your life. I believed him. And um, I, I, I didn't get over that for a long, long time. Of course, followed by the shocks of Dr. King and the shocks of Bobby Kennedy. And America lost its innocence that day. How did you follow the news that day? How did you follow the story? What, what was, was going on in, in your life? Walter Cronkite. And what do you recall? I recall Walter Cronkite finally saying he was dead. Uh, they had, they had uh, stories from the hospital and, and, and finally the story that he died. Was your first reaction one of wanting to run to a television set? Was that what it, happened for you? Exactly Governor? what I did. I went home. I had a very small apartment. Uh, uh, I was doing my Ph.D. work at Columbia. Yeah. And uh, I stayed in front of that television, I think, for a couple of days. They canceled all the classes. There was nothing going on at Columbia. Uh, so I said, I just watched, and all alone. I was no, nobody there. Did a little crying in the morning. But uh, I didn't leave that television set, I think, for 24 hours. So more, probably 48 hours before I, before I finally left that apartment. Did you ever have a meeting? Did you ever have a chance to, to see the president in person, Governor? Oh, sure. Tell uh, us. I was up at the Cape one time, and I had my son Tom with me. And I knew that he went to t 10 o'clock mass. So we went to 10 o'clock mass, and we saw him there. What a and thrill. It was a thrill. A yeah. thrill for the kid. He never forgot that he saw John Kennedy. Your remembrances uh, of, of, of ever encountering the president, seeing him, oh, yeah. meeting I, him? I, I, not when he was president. Uh, I met him a number of times before he was president, when he was a senator. Uh, my father served in Congress with him, and they were friends. Uh, Jackie's parents were very close friends of my mother and father. I was teaching school during the election, and I was head of the Kennedy for President Club at, at the school. So I was very much with him. But I remember when I met him, uh, very unassuming, very nice. And I just, he was a symbol to me of all that was good about America in those days. What was the significance of that day, do you think, for all Americans and, and people around the world? I think it was the beginning of the end of American innocence, uh, because after that, there were so many shocks to the system. That was the biggest shock. But to lose Martin Luther King, who many of us at my age at that point looked up to as the great hero of our generation, uh, to lose Bobby Kennedy, and then all the shocks of the Vietnam War and the Nixon resignation, I mean, one after the other, these were shocks to the democracy. And I don't think we've ever quite recovered. The kind of optimism that was in the 50s and into the Kennedy administration, where we all looked ahead as America was going to lead the world into a new dawn. Uh, that just wasn't round anymore after those shocks. We, we went into a deep pessimism, and uh, I think we're still, we still have, we, we came out, I think, during Reagan, Morning in America and all of that, but then we weren't, <laughs> didn't last.
Was it a loss of innocence? Kennedy and, and Roosevelt may be the only heroes I ever had. Can you tell us why, Governor? Because they were heroes. <laughs> in what sense? They were heroes in that they inspired the country. And that's how you remember JFK and, and all the significance of that day 50 years ago.